Hello guys, how it's going? Today I'm starting a new series where I tackle the most common iOS interview questions. In today's video, we're gonna discuss the most common interview question we'll encounter, which is what's the difference between a class and a struct? Yeah, I know it's really common. You, have, you may have seen a lot of content about this already, but here I want to do a little bit different. I want to go beyond the surface level explanation that just explained the value types versus reference type kind of explanation and I want to go beyond that and discuss topics like what's the difference between a heap memory location and a stack memory location when should I choose a class over a struct and what's the difference between a static memory location and dynamic memory location so this way you can be prepared to any follow-up question that may come up and also a bonus tip for your interviews Let's dive into it. All right, let's start with structs. Structs are value types and they are stored directly in memory. On the stack, they hold their data and make a copy when passed to another variable or function. This behavior is perfect for simple independent data structures like this temperature struct that I'm gonna show you right now. In this struct, we have two variables, Celsius and Fahrenheit. The Fahrenheit is a computed property that returns the calculation. So here we create a current temp and sets to 22.5 degrees Celsius. When we create another variable called another temp and assign the current temp to it, it's actually making a copy of current temp. So when we assign another temp to 30 degrees Celsius, it doesn't affect the current temp. When we print here, current temp Celsius is gonna print 22.5 when we print another temp.celsius, it's gonna print 30 degree Celsius because they are independent. So let's compare with classes. Classes are reference types and stored on the heap. They pass value by reference, so multiple variables can point to the same instance. When you pass a reference type, you are dealing with a reference to its place in memory, not a copy of the data. This is suitable for scenarios where you need shared and mutable data as shown in the shopping cart example that I'm showing you right now. We have the shopping cart here with a variable called items which is an array of strings and a function to add items. So when we create here the cart A, we create a new shopping cart and then we add an item called shoes. Here we create a cart B where we assign the cart A to it. So this both have first to the same place in memory. So when we add the item t-shirt to the card B, both cards are affected. You can see here, when we print card A items, we output both items. And when we print card B items, we also output both items because we actually mutating the same instance, card B, just holds a reference to cart A. Did you see the difference? So you, you heard me talk about stacks and heaps, but what's the difference? What does that even mean? Let's discuss what's the difference between a heap memory location and a stack memory location. This stack is used for static memory allocation and the heap is used for dynamic memory allocation. This basically means that static memory allocation on the stack happens at compile time and dynamic allocation on the heap happens at runtime. And that's one of the reasons structs are faster. Variables allocated on the stack are stored directly into memory and accessing memory is very fast because we can allocate and deallocate memory simply by incrementing and decrementing the stack pointer. On the other hand, on the heap, the allocation is more complex because you need to search for an unused block of memory which makes the allocation slower compared to the stack. You can use a stack when you know how much data you need to allocate before compile time and they are not too big. You can use the heap when you don't know how much data you will need to allocate or they are too big. The stack is thread specific and the heap is application specific. In multi-threading, each thread has its own stack, but the heap work across multiple threads at the same time. I know that's a lot of information, so let's summarize. 
So for the heap, we have dynamic memory location for the stack, static memory location. On the heap, the allocation happens at runtime. On the stack, at compile time. For allocation on the heap, there is a complex search for an available block to allocate. And on the stack, it's simply by incrementing and decrementing the stack pointer. On the heap, it works across multiple threads at the same time. And for the stack, each thread has its own stack. The heap is a bit slower and the stack is faster. Clear now? Now I'd like to show you a clip from a talk from WWDC called Understanding Swift Performance. It's one of my favorite talks and I think this clip summarizes everything we've discussed so far. So let's check it out. Here we have a point struct with an X and Y stored property. It also has the draw method on it. We're going to construct a point at 0, 0, assign point 1 to point 2, making a copy, and assign a value of 5 to point 2.x. Then we're going to use our point 1 and use our point 2. So let's trace through this. As we enter this function, before we even begin executing any code, we've allocated space on the stack for our point 1 instance and our point 2 instance. Here the drawing is actually inverted, so the top of the stack is at the bottom, but you get the idea. And because point is a struct, the x and y properties are stored in line on the stack. So when we go to construct our point with an x of 0 and a y of 0, all we're doing is initializing that memory we've already allocated on the stack. When we assign point 1 to point 2, we're just making a copy of that point um, and initializing the point 2 memory, again, that we'd already allocated on the stack. Note that point 1 and point 2 are independent instances. That means when we go and assign a value of 5 to point 2.x, point 2.x is 5, but point 1.x is still 0. This is known as value semantics. Then we'll go ahead and use point 1, use point 2, and we're done executing our function. So we can trivially deallocate that memory for point 1 and point 2 just by incrementing that stack pointer back up to where we were when we entered our function. Let's contrast this to the same exact code, but using a point which is a class instead of a struct. All right. So when we enter this function, just like before, we're allocating memory on the stack. But instead of for the um, actual storage of the properties on point, we're going to allocate memory for references to point 1 and point 2, references to memory we're going to be allocating on the heap. So when we construct our point at 0, 0, Swift is going to lock the heap and search that data structure for an unused block of memory of the appropriate size. Then, once we have it, we can initialize that memory with an x of 0, a y of 0, and we can initialize our point 1 reference with the memory address to that um, memory on the heap. You see that the stack is still there. So we have the, the space for the, for the class instance, but they are, are actually pointing to the heap. So watch what happens when we assign the point, two, point 1 to point 2. Note, when we allocated on the heap, Swift actually allocated for our class uh, point four words of storage. This is uh, in contrast to the two words it allocated when our point was a struct. This is because now the point's a class, in addition to these storage for x and y, we're allocating two more words that Swift is going to manage on our behalf. Those are denoted with these blue boxes um, in the heap diagram. When we assign point 1 to point 2, we're not going to copy the contents of point like we did when point was a struct. Instead, we're going to copy the reference. So point 1 and point 2 are actually referring to the same exact instance of point on the heap. That means when we go and assign a value of 5 to point 2.x, both point 1.x and point 2.x have a value 5. This is known as reference semantics and can lead to unintended sharing of state. Then we're going to use point 1, use point 2, and then Swift's going to deallocate this memory on our behalf, locking the heap and returning that unused block to the appropriate position, and then we can pop the stack. All right, so what did we just see? We saw that classes are more expensive to construct than structs because classes require a heap allocation. Because classes are allocated on the heap and have reference semantics, um, classes have some um, powerful characteristics like identity and indirect storage. But if we don't need those characteristics for our abstraction, we're going to get better if we use a struct. So as you saw in the end of the clip, on the point example, struct is a better option. So how we decide which one to choose when we are modeling our data. That's what I want to discuss now. So, which one should you choose? Use structs by default. It's cheaper, faster, and fulfills almost all your needs. The Swift standard library and foundation use structs for types used every day, such as numbers, strings, arrays, and dictionaries. But if you need something more robust and need to control identity, you should use classes. What do I mean by that? For example, when you create a view model, 
you should use a class because you need to control identity. Your view model has a two-way binding relationship with your views. It's the source of truth of your data, so it needs to keep identity. But for example, imagine you have a user that is stored in a database. The ownership of the identity belongs to the database, so you just need a struct and fetch the user. For most cases, if you're not sure which one to pick, you probably just need a struct and maybe some protocols for expanding its capabilities. So in summary, remember, structs are value types stored in the stack with static memory location at compile time, efficient for small and simple data structures that does not own identity. Classes are reference types stored on the heap with dynamic memory location at runtime, ideal for complex and shared data structures that holds identity. To wrap up, I want to finish this video with an interview tip. Go along with the interviewer. Don't overcomplicate your answer in advance. Wait for the follow-up questions and dive deeper if needed as the interview progress. I made the same mistake several times in the past when I was, let's say, over-prepared and I was getting ahead of myself, answering questions that the interviewer didn't ask yet. So go along, wait for the interviewer to give you cues or directions and go answer the questions as they arise. Don't step ahead and try to answer something that your interviewer didn't ask yet. All right, and that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content, smash that like button. It really helps the content reach more people. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.